Hi, everyone. Before we get to the episode, we want to take a moment to address the June 24th Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. This decision stripped away the legal right to have a safe and legal abortion. Restricting access to comprehensive reproductive care, including abortion, threatens the health and independence of all Americans. This decision could also lead to the loss of other rights. To learn more about what you can do to help, go to podvoices.help. We encourage you to speak up, take care, and spread the word. The link to podvoices.help will be in the details of this episode. Hey, y'all, I just wanted to tell you about a conference that you might want to be a part of. It's called Baja Con, and it's going to be August 26th through 28th. It's going to be right on the edge in Sarnia, Ontario, Canada, and Port Huron, Michigan. And it's going to have some of your favorite speakers, Seth Andrews, Dan Barker, Annie Laurie Gaylor, our own Dave Warnock, Josh Bowen, um, Himmet Meta. So it's going to have a lot of people. And Baja stands for Blue Water Atheists, Humanists, and Agnostics Conference. So I'm going to put the details right in the description, but if you can go to that, I think you'll enjoy meeting a lot of people who are just like you. So Baja Khan, August 26th through 28th. Just go to Blue Water Aha for Atheist Humanist Agnostics.com. An announcement of something fun we're doing. If you're a sponsor, you know that we do a live Zoom meeting, and that's where people actually get to see and meet and talk to Bonnie. And now we're starting something new. So on the 27th of this month, July, for our Zoom meeting, we're bringing in Mo. Mo is the one that we did the two Duggars episode. She knows everything Duggars. I mean, her mind, it's wild. And she's really bubbly and nice. So if you don't sponsor us and you'd like to, you can see something in the description of this episode or go to deconversiontherapypodcast.com. We really appreciate our sponsors. It helps us in so many ways. So we definitely want to give you something fun and new and exciting. And if you're a sponsor, we will see you July 27th with Mo. Hi guys, welcome to Deconversion Therapy, the podcast. This is Bonnie over in Florida and up there in Tennessee. It's me and other terrible people. No, there's good people here, but we did have some uh, racists show up on Juneteenth. So Tennessee in the house. All right, so we'll get this done here up top. We can be found on all of the social media. <laughs> um, and you can find all the links to where those are in the description underneath um, our podcast information in whatever platform you listen to podcasts on. All those are in there. Our mailing address is in there. Mail us stuff. I will write you a thank you note back and include a prize, which I won't tell you what it is. Bonnie sent me something. I I knew that you, I knew you could handle this job, Bonnie. I yeah. knew if I gave it to you. I cannot mail anything to save my life. I don't know what the situation is. It's, I, I'm going to say it's religious or not religious. It's trauma. You I'm can just going to make open, that up because we're hold getting on. into you trauma. You can open a mailbox, a P.O. box, but you can't mail anything? <laughs> Okay. Correct. <laughs> so we're going to talk about Teal Swan, the spiritual guru, in these two episodes. Uh, so be prepared for that. But before we get into some, it'll still, we'll keep it light. But before we get into some of that heavy stuff, I wanted to tell you something that shocked the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Are you ready, girl? Um so I get on Twitter where I sometimes find things, 
And the algorithm knows me well. So it has this story about a U.S. pastor who told the Southern Baptist Convention that a lot of pastors hoard themselves out to Trump. And how? And I was like, oh, he's a pastor at our church that we grew up in. Really? Still? Is that crazy? Like right now? Yes. Right now. Well, I'm sorry. I mean, not an ex-pastor. It was when I read it. Oh, I yeah. have a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, yeah. But, and number two, he's black. What? He's a That's black not, pastor. That does not sound like it our is, church. I, I am <laughs> not joking. That's why I just oh. looked and I'm like, I've got a triple quadruple check this because I don't want to get this information wrong. And he is making national news. And of course, a bunch of pastors are attacking him. And some are like, that's foul language. And you're like, that's exactly the language that the Bible used Mm -hmm. about whores of Babylon. Anyway. So he must be some kind of like associate pastor. I think what they call him is the pastor over the other two people of color. I think it's official. (laughs) I want to end the Zoom call now and just go look that up. (laughs) Because you don't believe it? Yeah. When did we get black outreach in that church? I think think there is a meeting (laughs) and it was called How to Get people of color to like us and come here. First of all, I'm sure it is only affluent people. I was going to say they probably um, had a meeting like we're missing all the money from people of color. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Who can we get to wrangle them? Or how can we get more political um, you know, backing from <laughs> black Americans. Oh, let's get a black. Well, this black pastor is not going to play that game. It makes me so, want to go check yeah. it out. And P.S. I really think that the other pastors who are giving him shit are probably as excited to shit on a black person as they are to shit on somebody who they don't agree with. That is exactly what is popping up is people are already just saying things like, oh, you know, you're bringing race into this. And he's like, wait a minute. So I just (laughs) happen to be a black pastor, but everything I say is unacceptable. So it's it's very interesting. He wrote, um, 100% predictable. Black pastor provides a biblical critique of the sin of partiality. Some white Christian activist throws around deflecting labels, Mm. Uh, whether fear or expediency. Other white brethren won't tell dude number two to be quiet. Mm. So, yeah, the attacks he's getting, there aren't people who are standing up for him. Uh, It's very interesting. Of course, I'm all fine for the Southern Baptist Convention to totally implode. So it doesn't matter to me. I would like them to try to fire him and have him be like, no, I'm coming back Sunday. (laughs) (laughs) And he starts doing, but Sunday's coming. Uh, Don't pay me. I'm coming anyway. (laughs) Oh my gosh. That's really interesting. I can't wait to investigate. I was shocked because I read the name of the church. Mm, No. Okay. So before we get into Teal Swan, the guru, here are all your trigger warnings. You know that we keep it light. We laugh and laugh, but there will be mentions of suicide, self-harm, child abuse, sex abuse, although we will skip over any details and then, you know, quickly do some kind of knock-knock joke. I don't know. But I just want to say, because it's so important to this message of what Teal Swan's trying to do, the new suicide hotline number is 988. We'll put it in the description, 988. Now, to go back to the idiot's perspective on things, I'm reading the same notes Karen just read, and I, in my brain, read it, tiger warnings. So there were your tiger warnings, people. 
And, and <laughs> there's the light part that you were just begging for. Do not go out with Tiger Woods if he's taken Ambien. And that Tiger number is 800 <laughs> 492. Uh. So we have a lot of sources for this one. And i just going over really quick. If you guys haven't watched Hulu's The Deep End, it's four episodes. It blew my mind. Um, and uh, articles from The Cut, the podcast The Gateway by Gizmodo. Mormon stories, which I just discovered because I am Mormon, of people who used to be in the Mormon faith. That's really good. Has a podcast and YouTube. The BBC a podcast called Oh No, Ross and Carrie. And I think I have one or two more, but I've just plugged it in here. Let me bust in here for a second and say that I've seen two and a half episodes of The Deep End, and you can also go to Amazon and buy it if you don't want to subscribe to Hulu. Um, and uh, there's some really funny stuff going on in there. It's not funny in the delivery of these people, but <laughs> it's it's um, it's amusing. And I haven't gotten into the horrible part. Karen's going to tell me that. Oh, there's there's uh, uh-huh. we're just going to go. So we're not going to there's nothing to really ruin about this story. So don't be like, oh, let me watch it first does not matter. And if you're like us, you'll forget. Anyway, <laughs> had you ever heard of her? Absolutely not. And I love me some spiritual people, me but too. more like the Eckhart Tolle and Brene Brown. And, um, and of course, Russell Brand. <laughs> well, that's the funny thing. She loves Russell Brand because in one of her things that she was doing like a show or she does like you know, little um, mini conferences or talks. Mm -hmm. She's like, what's that guy with the big hair? And he's really good looking and he's really, you know, spiritual. And they're like, Russell Brand. Um, and then they gave a quote, something about like anyone that he said, anyone with my hair without money would just be crazy. Yeah. It's so true. Well, and even he's on the verge. <laughs> But he is very on the verge. It, but he has a lot of good things to say. I mean, I I always reference that I would go live in his commune. You just want to iron his white undershirts that They're he wears. They're so gross. <laughs> so scoop necked. <laughs> They're just scoop necks with the. Ugh. Let me let me also add to the Russell Brand thing that I was talking to my counselor, therapist, whatever you want to call her, this morning. She was talking about the challenges that we have in everyday life of the stories that we tell ourselves and the thoughts that ping and pang into our head and how she went to this great spiritual place in California. It was a place where people could decide to live there all the time, like a commune. This is not good. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is not good like... You're being funny. This is I, not good. Or? I, no, I, I have. A, I'm wondering if this is going in a bad direction. Oh, no. So she went to this commune for a spiritual retreat and she thought, oh my gosh, there are people who have chosen to live here full time on this commune and they're monks. It's something in California. I don't remember what she said, but she was thinking, wow, I don't know if I could live here the whole time. And then she went into their little gift shop and the two monks were bickering with each other. And I thought that was so like, okay, you think you're going to escape it and you're not people. There's going to be crazy human brain activity everywhere. And Teal Swan. Yep. <laughs> exactly. And that reminds me of when they used to have like Jesus World or whatever was open for a little while. The Jesus Christian, World. <laughs> um, amusement thing. And someone wrote about the adventure and they found a family arguing with each other. Yeah. <laughs> a man. Telling his daughter, come on, Becky, we're going to miss the resurrection. Because it, like, it, resurrection at three and six. Every half hour. Make your way. Yeah. <laughs> so Mary was born, oops, Teal was born, Mary Teal Bosworth, in 1984. She was born in New Mexico, but she grew up in Logan, Utah. And she was surrounded by Mormons. And because of that, she was the outcast, which is interesting because her family, you know, 
they they were not mormologists. So it seemed like she had a pretty okay childhood, except she was a little different. Um, I think she was pretty athletic, but it seems like she was a highly sensitive child. She talks now about what would probably be synesthesia, where she can sort of see in colors or hear things that not everyone hears. So sort of has that sensitivity. Mm -hmm. It will start getting maybe a little exaggerated. And because we are real therapists, we can maybe diagnose. (laughs) There's some things that are going on. But she grew up around horses in, in a small community. Horses will fuck you up. I mean, who knows any regular people horse people who grew up as horse people? <laughs> so we're going to get the letters now. The box is full. <laughs> so she sort of came on the scene. Everyone needs an origin story, or is in Christianity what you and I always wanted a kick ass testimony, but we never had them. Uh, and I was always envious of the people who would get brought to our church who just went through all these terrible things and then people would walk forward and I'd be like, how am I supposed to represent Christ by saying, I grew up middle class, I became a Christian at two. But she definitely had a testimony that got people blown away and she was on an Idaho news station around 2015. I could have all these dates wrong where she's interviewed about what happened to her growing up and as a teen. So she so they interviewed her as like a spiritual they, guru leader kind of person? No, just as a young woman. She wasn't there at all except for sort of news coverage. And it was like, we've come across a woman who says there is satanic activity right here in the Idaho deep lands or whatever mm. the Deep lands. Okay. I know. It is. That's what it is now. And so she's on there, and it's very interesting. You get insight into her right away because she's wearing, like, she's, what does she look like? I'll ask you that. She looks like she's tall, but probably because she's thin, and she's got very long, straight, no bangs, long brown hair that she swoops to one side. Yeah, she's striking. She's very beautiful, and she could easily be, you know, a model if you didn't talk to her, etc. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. <laughs> we will take a vote. She's very just uh, aesthetically, traditionally, you know. She is appealing the- to men, for sure. Yes, I would say that. So she's very pretty. She's on this news show. She's young. And I get very distracted. You know, when people go on the late night shows and all the women wear super short skirts so they can cross their legs and their legs are oiled up. Yeah, but then they try to put their hand over their cellulite. Yes, which my hands are not big enough. That's sort of what she was wearing on the news show, except it wasn't fancy, but it was very short. And because she is tall with long legs, (laughs) it was just a lot of leg for a TV thing. It just sort of distracted me. I'm like, I don't usually see this kind of thing where someone knows they're going to be interviewed. And so she begins to talk about since she was very young. She had been being assaulted by a family friend. So the story goes. She said this on a random local news show. Yes. Okay. (laughs) So the story goes, since she was very young, she had been highly sensitive and had a lot of issues with that. And the family had a vet that would come to the house for the horses and he was like oh I understand through my science training sort of what that is and what can help with that so he became quote friends with her and the parents saw that it was helping so they let her every once in a while go with him to like vet calls and supposedly his wife was on those calls there are two different stories according to her 
she was being abused by him, Mm -hmm. which could be true, from very Mm -hmm. young. But then the story goes, and he would sometimes sign me out of school, Hmm. or he would wake me up and drug me in the middle of the night, like 3 a.m., and take me out. And for years from 6 to 18, she would be brought into the world of Satanism where she had to perform terrible things. She had to do terrible things. She had to see terrible things, including that she saw five or six children unalived with her own eyes. And that one time he zipped her up into a corpse. Don't know what that was about. Uh, Her parents never knew that she was being signed out or that this guy was coming and stealing her in the middle of the night. He would also do these games, which would be he would pull the car over and say, run, and she would have to run through the forest, and his whole game was to catch her, and if he did, terrible things would happen. That, so, that is not a game. This is, although I think it was a movie called The Game, which is interesting that oh my God. these ideas came out around the same time as some of those oh. things. So she's telling this on the Idaho thing. <laughs> And she's saying she saw children killed. Well, if it's a local news, wouldn't you be like, um, we would like to know the names of these <laughs> right. children. Could you identify? Where, yeah. who, how, what. Mm-hmm. And so she would say a lot of, I don't remember. Now, she did report it to the authorities. But what's interesting, she only reported it. After she was married and her husband was like, we need to go to the police with this. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's maybe when a fabrication started. Well, it's definitely about all those kids being killed and the corpse and zipping up. Yeah, I don't know if she told him that and he and she couldn't back out and like, okay, let's go to the cops. Mm -hmm. So she did report it and the police... Obviously, couldn't find anything. How the hell do you investigate that many years later? And they uh, went. They went to the vet guy. mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And they were like, did you do this? Did you do that? And he was like, what? (laughs) And they went to the parents. The parents didn't, like, Mm -hmm. nobody knows any of this Mm -hmm. stuff. So here she is. She's on TV saying that story, and then at the end, it says, so Teal spends her time telling other people about how to take power over themselves and about satanic rituals. So I think that's where she started somehow, maybe going, I'm not even sure, to small churches or or whatever she would go to, to tell people. Mm -hmm. But there was a clip where... It was a young, goofy news guy said, do you ever think that maybe you've imagined these things? And everything that happens after that describes everything about Teal Swan. She went, (laughs) turned her head to the side. No, never. Mm -hmm. But like laughing, we all laugh at inappropriate times. But there's something about it that was just very, um, I'm never going to admit I know the truth. Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. So that is the beginning of her story. So when people began to find this out, a lot of people sought her out. Mm. And so a lot of people who follow her now mm-hmm. are like, if Teal can get through what she has had to get through, yeah, I can get through this. So she has um, about 1.6 million followers. Uh, On what? Like That could be Facebook. I think she has about 1.3 million subscribers on YouTube. What she did and that you and I will be doing right when we finish this episode is she got in touch with someone who knows how to work 
the internet. <laughs> and people right. have called her and this um, the cult of SEO. Like she has figured out how to optimize search engines. Oh, so okay. when anyone in who follows her, um, they usually found her because they typed in, my mom died, I don't know what to do. Oh, gosh. Or I feel like ending my life. Yeah. Is in SEO like search engine optimization? Yes. Okay. Um, hey, listeners, I figured that out <laughs> just because I know words. Thank you. So I will. I'm hiring you <laughs> to do our SEO. <laughs> and so hers is suicide, self-harm. Um, and she knows this. She said, we are there. We put in keywords for when people are in desperate situations. Because sure. I grew up suicidal, so I can help them. Right. And believe me, that's only the beginning of how why she thinks she's qualified. But everyone says that's what happened. So one guy who actually did the Gizmodo podcast about her, he tripped across her because he Googled the MASH theme song. Oh, is, Suicide is Painless. Yeah. Yeah. And after he listened to it, she came up. And he wow. was like, who's this? And because she's so attractive mm. and she has like this whooshy stuff behind her. She speaks very gentle, but confident. Oh, I've got a bust in there because somebody the yeah. other day was telling me that the people who are the biggest cult leaders or like um, uh, leaders who have huge followings like Hitler, that they do a certain type of hypnosis. And we've talked about that before, but you just said confident. And he said, these cult leader kind of personalities are always the least unsure people in the room. Like, that's mm -hmm. so interesting. You can you can imagine the people who flock to her were so unsure. I mean, we've mm -hmm. seen it before. Those are the kind of people who are hanging out with Charles Manson. Yeah. Very unsure and, of themselves. And if you're Googling, if you're at the bottom of your life and you don't know if you want to continue. Yeah. Or you just had a breakup and up pops this woman and she has tons of videos. Like she used to do one every day. Mm -hmm. And she links to her other videos. So she's like, if you want to know more about, then click this and click. So you can be on there for five hours watching her stuff without ever thinking yourself, I want to find out so-and-so information. Mm -hmm. You know, she leads you there. Yeah. She is her own black hole. <laughs> or no, wormhole. Sorry. <laughs> Rabbits and their... Yes whole jokes all there. Right. As far as what she teaches, it's interesting. To me, it, it, it would be, she calls herself a revolutionary, and she's like, I'm a game changer. She's very, like, weirdly confident. The Where least I, unsure person in any room. She doesn't have any poking areas where she's soft and, like, like laughs or breaks for a minute at all. She's got this weird self-confidence that is unnerving. And mm -hmm. she says she's one of the best at, you know, mind games. I'll tell you all the things that she thinks she does. But basically, it's bumper sticker wisdom, but all very true. Yeah. Well, a lot of it is very true. It's just how she says you can get there is the dangerous part. It's like two truths and a lie. You know, mm -hmm. you're your only best friend. You know, you can do anything you put your mind to. You have reptile eyes. You know, like mm -hmm. everything's going fine. And then she throws in something that's off the chart. And I felt like that is how the show started because when they showed her in front of audiences, I was like, oh, well, she's saying some of the things that my other favorite people say. And it's nothing really new, but everybody has their own way of phrasing it. And I'm like, well, I would listen to this. 
you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, <laughs> they don't make a show out of this <laughs> for nothing. Where the <laughs> hell is this going? Okay. <laughs> and that's why I think I, a lot has to do with her looks. And people have already said, like, it, it's between her looks and her SEO that she's who she is. Because everything else can be a bit far-fetched. But you just don't see a lot of middle-aged women, you know, being like, okay, where's my cult? This this woman knows exactly what she's doing. She studies a lot, and I'm sure she's studied, remember the Nexium people and how mm-hmm. Keith Raniere and his assistant woman, they studied how to speak so that it became hypnotic. Mm-hmm. She speaks like that. Yeah. Everything seemed to be okay. Sure. We'll like your woo-woo stuff. You throw a crystal in here. You like to do paintings that supposedly bring up vibration. Fine. You're using some basic psychology. Fine. But then she starts talking about how terrible the suicide hotline is. Never call that, she said. Come to me, listen to my videos. And she got in trouble because she has had people who follow her in their lives. And we can get into, like, is that the fault of her? Is it not? She says, of course, it's not. In fact, there's an interviewer from the BBC who's, who said, some people would say that your cult is the one, or not cult, she didn't say that, that you're the one that encourages them. And then she laughs again. She goes, uh, <laughs> no. And I'm like, no, you just still shouldn't laugh at those times of dead kids, dead people. And she said, people come to me because they're already suicidal. Mm-hmm. They're people that if I can't save them, no one can. <laughs> okay. But she had released a video where she talks about how suicide is a gift and that it's the ultimate reset button. Mm-hmm. She also had people, since a lot of people followed her, who did have suicidal ideations, she would do practices like, okay, I want you to lay down, you're in your grave. She has a lot of guided visual things. Yeah. She does a lot with death. And psychologists are like, no, no, no. We've done studies, and people who have these kinds of things, we don't want them to come to peace with their death. We right. want them... <laughs> to run the other way. We want them to hold out long enough to get the proper counseling. But she feels she's sort of, once they accept it, it takes the mystery away. So she's she's not qualified, if I don't put that in. Uh, yeah, thanks. She does not have, <laughs> no. <laughs> she does not have a degree, however... However, she has stated that her IQ is 170, which is pretty good since the highest score is 160, unless the person giving it to you (laughs) has the credentials to help you go over it. She said she's smarter than Albert Einstein, and no one would ask him. Well, if she gave herself the test, she could probably give herself a little extra score, too. Some other things she said she can do. She can see into bodies. She says that she is a medical clairvoyant. Hmm. So, and she's very, like, straight up. It's a kind of discussion that, that makes me very uncomfortable. And I know anyone who wants to, quote, follow someone already has that sort of following DNA in them, whether it's nature or nurture. Right. And she tramples right over that. She gets in your face and she's like, you've got problems with your spleen. (laughs) I do? Yes, I can see it. Well, what do I do with it? It's because you have problems with your father. My father's great. 
Is he great? Or you just want to believe the story you were told? And, you know, people will break down crying. They're there for help. Well, how about the guy who was being interviewed in the show and he had a tattoo on his palm that she, quote unquote, suggested he get after they had a session and she said to him, you're lying to me. Your father was abusive. And he was like, what? I'm not lying. And then his palm tattoo says, is it true? Because she would always ask, is it true? And so I love that he, he, in his explanation of it, he goes, I have this tattoo because she suggested it. I'm like, wow, that's a, that's a big leap to take when there's just a suggestion. And we'll get into her tattooing situations coming up because, okay, she, she's a clairvoyant. She's a clairaudience. I don't really know what all these things are. I don't care. Did she make up um, these words? Yeah, oh. she's a Claire, Claire word maker upper. No, okay. I don't know. She also said she can heal people. Of course, she can see in their bodies and she can speak to dead relatives, etc. She can hear tectonic plates sure. move. <laughs> see, you said tectonic plates, and that's my tiger warning. The one class in college that I just flat out failed was geology. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just, I couldn't concentrate. And all I remember was, what the hell's going on with these tectonic plates? So I'll never if, know. <laughs> see, and if Teal, well, Teal didn't make it to college. That's but right. She can tell you. She knows. <laughs> She's also had 12 lives. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to the show, Oh No, Carrie, uh, Oh No, Ross and Carrie. And they were saying, you know, when people ask her things and she's like, oh, yeah, I've had 12 lives. You know, one of them was, you know, some Indian guru. Why don't people right then say, can you speak Hindi? You know, like, yeah. can you prove it? Can you show? What do you tell me something? No one ever challenges her. Well, I'm sure memories just come in in blobs of a vision or. You know, much like her other dreams, possibly. Or whatever you want it to be. That's right. That's exactly it. To me, she has the personality of Dr. Phil, except without any qualifications. And I don't like him. And without any sense of humor. There's not really a sense of humor. She talks a little bit robotically and very aggressive. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's all about her knowing that she has to be the least unsure person in the room. Or she really does have narcissistic uh, personality, which I think she does. Oh, sure. Because a lot of her things are very grandiose. So she's got the ESP. She can see into the future. She can travel outside her body. Very convenient. And in the but, show, she tells her followers that they absolutely must be committed to her cause above anything. Mm -hmm. that's, 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 that's a little self-puffed up. She says when people ask her, is this a cult? She said, oh, no, this isn't a cult. I know. Because she knows everything. That's her, that's her main thing. Oh. I know what a cult is, and so I know how to prevent that from happening around me. As in, I'm going to take care of people mm -hmm. by my knowledge of what cults are and preventing that. She's also half human and half alien, so there is some talk of some other planet, and I forget what it is. Hmm. But there's a lot getting mishmashed in here. And this is Any her own admission that she's half yes. alien? Oh. Yes. Well, I didn't get that far in the show. Oh, there's, well, I've done a lot of research outside of that, too. That might be in the show. It might not. Mm -hmm. To explain why I think she does have some kind of narcissistic thing, not only the the grandeur of her claims about anything, but that she doesn't believe people will doubt her. She doesn't give them time to doubt uh, right. her, but she also has like 
these very elaborate fantasies that she thinks are attainable. So she seriously says she wants to become so famous that she can buy countries and build new societies. Oh, okay. Like who? Which if... <laughs> like... Uh-huh. Oh, mm -hmm. and like that person? Okay. Yeah. Oh. So she thinks, you know, she frames it to people like, I have a way that can really help people so we can all start a new society and it'll really help people. But I'm the same as you. Like, really? So who are you going to colonize? What country are you going to take over and tell the people there either get out or you need to believe like I do? She needs to buy a an abandoned youth camp in Idaho, like those <laughs> other people with the robes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, it's been revealed that because of her past trauma, which we can get into a little bit, Teal can't do household chores. <laughs> so she has a bunch Hold of volunteers. On. Hold on. <laughs> Now my mother's whole personality might be explained. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. <laughs> she definitely has this thing. <laughs> Bonnie will be right back after. It's, uh, my, she definitely it's my personal trauma. <laughs> Oh, my God. Teal definitely has this weird thing of, I know everything, I can do anything, yet I'm not perfect. I'm messed up. I've had trauma. Mm -hmm. She currently still ha does self-harm, uh, which is very alarming and is terrible. And oh we'll my. get a little into how she is probably not a healed person a little later. But she's Has anyone ever people, really healed? Exactly. I mean, if we were, I... we'd be bored. <laughs> if we were healed, but our we houses, would be bored. <laughs> but our houses would be spick and span. <laughs> So she has told volunteers, because people move, now they're in Costa Rica, which is cult central now. They Are have they? some land and, an, and a place there, and they have volunteers, or what's called her inner circle, we'll yeah. get into that too, who live there. And of course, it's free labor. And she never cleans because she said she had to clean I don't know if it was the guy who abused her or something with her parents and that it triggers her trauma. Yeah. So she can't claim. She has a son. <laughs> She's been married five times, which is fine. It really is. But she has a son who she doesn't really take care of. Aww. She does, like, the good things with him, but, like, all the harder things, she disappears. <laughs> it is my mom. <laughs> Wait, can we go back to to um, how she's got some kind of trauma from cleaning something? And I yes. will tell you, there was this day camp that I used to go to when I was little. My mom would go to work. I would go to the day camp. And they would have some of the kids there doing work. And there was one kid, you know, every now and then who would be called to clean the toilet. And I wanted to clean a toilet so bad. I was like, I got to get my hand on that toilet brush and go to town on that toilet. So I had the weirdest exact opposite. And so even to this day when I clean a toilet, I've got like, oh, look at me. I get to clean a toilet. Joy. See, that's, you must have had, yeah, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're not. They were giving yeah. me electroshock therapy in the other room. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Sorry. I just, I thought you needed to know that. I'm glad I know that. Yeah. I think it was the cut that there was a female journalist who was like, let me see what's going on here. Someone was actually like, I have bad acne. It is controlling my life, which for many people, it does. Yeah. So get that. 
And the article goes on to report about the little situation for, with Teal saying, you know, she can help. So Teal believes, according to this, in mind-body integration. I think most of us do now. That's, we're getting there. Mm-hmm. Most medical problems are symptoms of spiritual distress. Okay. Mm. Hmm. She says acne's one of them. Heal, heal your soul and your complexion will improve. And Teal says you can consider clogged organs like the liver a primary manifestation of the suppressed and clogged and repressed emotions. And you could consider the pimple a secondary manifestation of that original (laughs) pattern of suppressing and denying your negative emotions. Is that the, why on TikTok they start you out with all of those zit popping videos? They don't with me, and I would watch those. Didn't they? Didn't start you out with that kind of nope. crap? Mm. No. Every they time, you. every time you would send me before I got on TikTok. Every time you would send me one to watch, it would revert to the ear zit. I'm like, Karen, why? Why? And I didn't realize it wasn't you. It was like TikTok going, let's start here, crazy person. Uh, Oh, my God. You're bored. It's 1 a.m. You're bored. You're coming for the pimple video. You're spiritually void. See what you think of this. Oh, my gosh. Well, let me just add, and I'm not being mean, but... Maybe I am, and that's okay. But if you watch the show, she cannot cure acne. All right. Is that your dig? No, it's not a dig, but it's it's true. She's got people around her who have issues with it. And I bet they never hear the end of it. No, I'm not. Uh, no, I mean, it's just a thing that happens, but... Exactly. If she could, If she could cure it, she would cure it for the people in her life who are in her inner circle... Bonnie, what? they have to do the work. Yeah, I know. Bon- Teal says they need to do breath work, and that requires the person to, quote, breathe through their pores, and that their pores are tiny chakras. Okay. And says that if they're clogged, they can clog your entire spiritual flow. That might explain the journalist, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. The journalist goes on. To say, just to be clear, this is bullshit. (laughs) Since Teal thinks she knows everything and she's a medical savant Mm -hmm. and has medical intuition, she just makes up stuff based on what she feels is right. Yes. And there is a belief system that things that go on with your emotions affect your body, and that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. But I'm not telling a two-year-old with leukemia Nothing. No. You yes. know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's cut it off there. <laughs> so uh, her whole concept is called the completion system. And it has to do with shadow work, which I didn't understand what that was. And you're going to explain it to me? No. Please? Yeah, I will. <laughs> okay. So as far as I understand... Any of our problems, there's a shadow us that is behind all of it. So it's very much like cognitive behavioral therapy, except without any kind of education or license. Yet again, you get to call it shadow work. So where you're going, you know, I'm upset uh, or I'm an angry person. Why? Mm -hmm. I'm angry because, you know... I'm 40 and I haven't done anything yet. Why? And so you keep answering those whys in cognitive behavioral therapy and in shadow work till you get down to like this, whatever has triggered you. And usually it's something in childhood or you feel you're insignificant because a family member made you feel that way or whatever. So her idea is that you go through this And you do this practice every day. You do your shadow work. Okay. So people who are already suffering with trauma can come. And, well, it's similar to the journals you and I started (laughs) that I forget to do, but I sometimes do, that are actually helpful where you take something that's bothering you and you just sort of yell it out 
And then you just go, oh, okay, that's why I was doing that. And Mm -hmm. you sort of get over it and you don't worry about it. This goes much deeper because it usually leads back to trauma or different things that you might have gone through. Because a lot of the people who follow her haven't gotten relief from, like, difficult shit. Yeah. But she, it sounds like she's telling them that there's difficult shit they don't even know about to kind of keep them on the hook. And that is the weird thing. So she's like, okay, I want you to, one, buy my book. Two, do my Mm. course about the completion thing. But if you go and see her, she'll have these very one-on-one or small group things where then people are told what their issues are. And they did not even know it. So one woman had scoliosis. Of course they didn't know it. (laughs) (laughs) One woman had scoliosis. She comes and she's like, is there any way I can heal my scoliosis? And Teal goes, that's because your mother never supported you. And the woman's (laughs) like, well, my mom and I get along really well. She's like, I don't think you did all the time, did you? And so she can pick, Mm -hmm. because then you go, if you're already hurting and traumatized, you'll go, well, I mean, not in junior high, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then it gets into, did you know that your mother resented you because your mother had to grow up too fast? You know, and she'll say things that break the people. I mean, she said some horrible things to people that we'll get into, but. And they're very matter of fact. It's not with any empathy. It's not with any warmth. No. Yeah. That's why I don't think I could be her kind of cult leader, because even if I knew things, I would be like, I'm sorry to tell you. Let me write it in a note, (laughs) and I would just pass it. Like, she is, you've had trauma. It is this. It is that. One woman came forward, and she and her husband or partner had been trying to have a baby forever. She's like, we can't have a baby. Teal said, that's because, you know, you have this or that in your life and you have to fix it. And the woman is like, oh, you know, okay, that gave her some hope. And then Teal just blurted out, but you're going to be a failure at motherhood. (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. Can you imagine? Oh, my God. (laughs) And that's it. And, you know. Everyone is a failure at motherhood. No one knows perfection. At that. Right. And she's like, you're going to screw it up. (laughs) And some people have been like, okay. So her whole thing is that she's just working out her issues. (laughs) With everyone. Through her audience. Yeah. (laughs) We're going to get into the nuts and bolts and the shit that's really been going down in part two of this. But we just wanted to lay lay the... what is it? Ground the foundation. Work? Yes. Lay some pipe. Um, I think that's naughty. No, we, that's, lo- that's a term. <laughs> I think that's what you say to the cute plumber when he comes to your door and you do- Okay. We're going to get into what's really happening in her inner circle and some of the really crazy shit that's been going on in episode two. And I'm going to do shadow work with Bonnie. I'm going to shadow box. That's weird. You're going to suck at everything. (laughs) Thank you. Sorry. I know. There's no no remedy. Oh, okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Why, hello, Bonnie. Did you know that we have a shop for our book and product recommendations? Right on our website at deconversiontherapypodcast.com. And then you click on the book slash product recommendations. You mean like our merch? Our irreverent merch? No, no. We have another store just for recommended books like Pure by Linda Klein about purity culture. Or my favorite, Sex Comedy God by Pete Holmes. And my favorite, Misquoting Jesus by Bart Arum that played an instrumental part in shaking up my beliefs that I was indoctrinated in. 
Plus, we have some cornball and some favorite mm-hmm. products from Jesus Bobbleheads for your car to some totally unrelated to the podcast things that we love also that give a peek into who we are in our personal lives. A little Easter eggs in there. On our website, we even included a non-Amazon bookstore link for people who want to support independent bookstores with the proceeds. So you can click on deconversiontherapypodcast.com, then go to book slash product recommendations, or click on the link in the details of this episode. 